10 past, so we might as well get started. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm, the, I'm Stephen Walling. Uh, I'm a longtime English Wikipedia editor and admin, uh, common admin, and I also work for the Wikimedia Foundation as the product manager for the editor engagement experiments team. Um, I want to talk about one of the features that our team built and tested this year, and which is now in production on English Wikipedia for all new registered contributors. Um, so quick overview of what we're going to talk about. Um, E3, we don't have a formal roadmap where we say, over this entire year, we're going to build these four features. We tackle certain problem areas that are preventing new editors from contributing to the project. And then we think of a list of solu possible solutions for that problem. And then we test solutions and make what, what features work, we run with. Um, so I'm going to talk about the problem that we set out to solve, the solution that we tested, um, how we tested it, the results, so what we're doing next, and take questions. Um, I'm not sure if people want to do questions in the middle of it, or they, are they really burning ones, or, or what. But I'm OK either way, waiting until the end, or, or just stopping for a few seconds. Um, <laughs> So the, the, the problem that we're solving here is that of all the, all the accounts that register on English Wikipedia, and this is true for most projects as well, except for some very, very small projects where they have like five to 100 people registering or something, so most of them edit. On English Wikipedia in particular, throughout most of its history, most of the people who signed up never edit at all, not even once. Um, and I, I think that's kind of a tragedy in a world where, unlike something like Facebook, where signing up is something that everybody who uses it does, registering an account on Wikipedia is kind of this momentous step towards becoming a serious contributor. There's a lot of awareness that has to happen before you do that um, in order to understand why you would need an account and, and, and make the active step of getting one. So this is kind of a depressing statistic um, that only around 30% of all English Wikipedia accounts make an edit in any namespace. So that includes the sandbox, that includes their talk page, that includes everything. Um, and the, the numbers change a little bit seasonally with, on this statistic, but they don't jump around by, like, say, an order of magnitude. It doesn't suddenly become 50% or 10% um, over the year. Um, another look at this problem over time is if you look at a slightly different but uh, related statistic, which is the number of users who actually even try to edit. So they click edit button on their, in the first 24 hours on an article, not even necessarily save. That's slightly higher, so it's around 30 to 40 percent. Um, but as you can see, the numbers jump around a little bit, depending on, say, when the fundraiser happens, that kind of thing. But they don't change by like an enormous order of magnitude over the years. This is 2011 to 13. Um, and if you want a closer look at this kind of data, these are all on public dashboards that the foundation maintains, which I can send you links to, and you can inspect the raw numbers and stuff like that. Um, so I, I also wanted to touch on this. This feature is on English Wikipedia only right now, and we tested it, and most of our features on English Wikipedia first. And I wanted to go into very quickly like why we do that. First of all, when you break down uh, the foundation's statistic of total active editors, that is the total number of users who are registered in a, and make five or more edits to articles, um, when, you break, when you break that total number down, which over the last year has been roughly flat, um, you, get this, you get a really interesting look at it, which is that large language Wikipedias, particularly English and German, are still very much in decline when it comes to new editor retention. And other Wikipedias, Spanish, Russian, Japanese, are actually growing by, it, by a significant amount. So those two things balance each other out so that we get a total flat number of total active editors. So first off, English Wikipedia is one of the worst in terms of editor retention. So it's important, and it's 50% of our traffic, so it's important for us to find solutions that could potentially work there. Um, and it's also a good test bed. It's half of our traffic. They make three or 4,000 new accounts a day on English Wikipedia. Um, the community is used to new features being launched all the time. And we, our team, know the English Wikipedia very, very well. Obviously, we all speak English. Um, and several of us are Wikipedia admins on English Wikipedia. Excuse me. Um, so I, the, if the problem is that most new people, a lot of all the people who sign up, don't edit, and most of the, uh, many, many of them don't even try, why is that? Um, in order to think about what feature might solve this problem, we have to form a theory about why people aren't editing. We can't just say, let's throw stuff at the wall and hope that they, they edit more. Um, I would say that the first reason is it's pretty obvious. It's hard to contribute. 
you've got wiki text and a lot of other problems in front of you, even if you know what to do. And the other thing is, I, I think most people, they don't get asked to contribute. So these two screenshots here on the left, that's the, for almost all of Wikipedia's history, that's the default message that was delivered to people after they registered. It says, welcome, your account has been created, go change your preferences, in case you want to use like, Monobook or Cologne Blue, you're really dying to use that. It logs you into these other projects. You can't click on these, on these icons to the other projects, so it's basically useless as a tool for educating people about the sister projects. And it also happens to give you a little plain text link back to where you were before. In the case of most people, that's the main thing. Now, there are a few exceptions to that MediaWiki default experience. The vast majority of projects, that's what all people who've ever registered see. There are a couple projects where they customize that message to get people to do something else. In particular, French and Polish Wikipedias um, encourage people to create their user page, which isn't such a bad thing. It's not an article contribution, but it's a positive thing to get going. Right now, the uh, default behavior was actually recently changed so that um, everywhere across the cluster, except on English Wikipedia, you get, uh, as soon as you sign up or you log in, you automatically get redirected back to where you were. But I, I, I think the, the end result here is whether we give you a useless landing page or we just send you back to whatever page you were reading, we don't really mark the occasion of you as a becoming a Wikipedia editor and suggest things for you to do if you uh, are interested in doing so. Um, and even if, it's uh, a Wikipedia where we might suggest things to do, like you know, send someone a welcome notification or something. We don't really show you how, and this is the why I split the tutorial, forget the tutorials in my talk. And so when I say that, I don't mean forget sitting down with your grandma or your friend and show them how to edit. What I mean is, uh, we don't, it's not really showing people how to edit to tell them go read a manual, or like a policy page or a list of steps about how to do something. People get lost in those pages and they end up mostly not. Um, so our solution that we tested uh, for how, like how to solve this problem is to start just by immediately after someone registers, sending them suggestions for what to do. There's really only two types of people who sign up for Wikipedia. People who already had something to do in mind and people who didn't, okay? Um, for the people who already had something in mind, we still included and actually bumped up the visibility a bit of a link at the bottom that says, no thanks, take me back to the page that I was on. Um, and it sends them back there. It actually sends them back to the edit window if they were editing as well. And then for the large number of people who had no idea where to get started on Wikipedia and no beginning point, we give you three suggested tasks to choose from. The first one is fix spelling and grammar um, in articles. The other one is improve the clarity of pages. And the third one is add wiki links to pages that are missing wiki links. The way that this is generated is we take a look at all the templates and categories that English Wikipedians have tagged for each of these things. So if, we, if you click one of these things, what happens is we send you an article, a random article, from the category articles needing copy editing, articles that are tagged as confusing, vague, or unclear, or articles that need more wiki links or have none in them whatsoever. Um, once you get to that page, we uh, not only, so we not only send you a random article, but we, we provide you with a little toolbar that lets you basically do three things. It tells you what the task is, so it's a reminder of why you're at this page again. Um, there's a show help button that launches a, guide, a tool tip based guided tour of every single step from before you edit and know what, what to change in the page to save. Um, you can see uh, the first step in the guided tour here, ideas on what to do. We actually point to that um, issue box because when we did usability tests, people actually read those things studiously, and often they're actually tagged with um, multiple, multiple issues in them. So we explicitly say, like, this is a list of ideas of what to do about the page. One of them is that you can fix spelling and grammar in the article, and there's other stuff as well. And then we point to the edit button, preview, save, yada, 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 depending on whether you're using Visual Editor or Wikipedia Editor. Um, the other two things in this toolbar are a thing to go back to the list. So if you decided, you know, actually, copy editing is kind of boring. I don't know what wiki links are, I might give that a try, I'll go back to that list. And quite a few editors actually do that, either before or after they complete a task. And then the next thing is just to skip to another article button to encourage people, if they find the topic confusing or boring of the actual article we suggest, that they can move on here. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about why we suggested, why we're suggesting tasks that are topically agnostic, in the sense that we're not asking people what are you interested in? Are you interested in dogs, or French, or Chinese, or technology, or whatever, and then trying to select a subset of those articles? 
Um, mostly we're not doing that because one, I think a large group of Wikipedians are, they, they arrive at articles not because they're an expert on the topic, but because they notice something is just plainly broken or wrong. So it's not really required to be an expert in the topic in order to edit it. Um, and then two, that's also just a really ridiculously hard problem to develop a comprehensive interest graph of an individual based on, say, one piece of feedback they give you. Most people look at a, a text box and you ask them what they're interested in, and they're supposed to type it or select from a list of categories or something, and they just don't. They get lost, they're confused. Um, so I, I think it's much better to just sort of send them on their way toward a task that we know is appropriate for new people. Um, and that's actually another part of why we selected these three tasks, is that all of them are things that you don't need to know a huge amount of complicated wiki text to do. You don't necessarily need to be a subject matter expert um, in them, and they're, they're relatively uncontroversial. So if you're copy editing a page or you're adding wiki links, you're not gonna be violating some community policy. Um, so how we test it, what happens after you complete this edit is we send you back to the article with the toolbar. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the things we have planned for that experience after, afterwards, but that's the basic idea. Um, and how we tested this, we used basically three methods to sort of prove what we're doing has value um, to the community and for these editors. One is we run what's called an A-B test, which is we take all the people who register in a given week, and we give half of them one experience and half of them the default experience or comparable experience that we want to test against. And then we go back and we comparatively uh, look at their edits. So it's kind of an objective randomized bucket um, without having to ask individuals. Um, another one we do is if we run getting started for all the editors in a week, or in a month, we can do what's called a cohort analysis, which we can take that chunk of users who came in during that week or that month, a given period of time, and track them over time. How many of them edited, how many keep editing, how many edits did it make, so it's an observational study. And then the last thing that we do is that even before we run A-B tests or we uh, launch cohort studies, um, we take a prototype or a working version of our feature and we give it to um, people who are around the world who have never edited Wikipedia, and we have them do a screencast of how they go through that process, and we sort of triage really obvious issues with the user experience before we even launch it on live on Wikipedia. And that actually, it's, we do very few of them each time, so we'll do like three people, but we end up getting a lot of really deep, valuable feedback about things that are just obviously broken. So for instance, the first step here used to be we just pointed people to the edit button. So we noticed in usability tests that people noticed the article issue banners that are like in yellow and red and are big and on the page, and they were confused about which task they should be doing, like where it was, why it was there, how it came about, that kind of thing. Um, so we use these three methods, qualitative and quantitative, to sort of shape what we're doing and the, the success of the feature, um, rather than just hoping that we're always that we're always brilliant and know everything about what to do. Um, in terms of what we measure, so when we run an A-B test or we look at a cohort study, we've got a list of users who had an experience and we want to know what kind of impact they made. The metrics that we use are basically fall into two camps. We want to know how productive these new people were and we want to know what the quality of their contributions were. Okay, like the foundation looks at something like total active editors in terms of number of edits. We don't actually care about number of edits. We just use it as a proxy for was this person contributing productively, productively to the encyclopedia? And we can't make that claim unless we also look at the quality of their edits. How often were they reverted? Were they ever blocked indefinitely for reasons like vandals and spam, bad usernames, basically everything under the sun. So we use it as like a, a gut check on the volume of people we're increasing. Um, the reason that in terms of uh, productivity, why we choose one plus and five plus article edits, first of all, we care about article edits the most, um, even though it knocks down the statistics by a good like 10% of the number of editors who throw out people who are editing in other main spaces. We care about our blood the most because we're most interested in bringing in people who want to build the encyclopedia, which isn't to say that people who start out making a copy of suggestion or editing in the sandbox are bad. They're just taking a little bit more secure this route, and we're not doing as much for them yet with this getting started experience. The reason we look at one plus in 24 hours is that if you look at all of the editors who've ever joined Wikipedia over all time, over all years, including anyone who's edited in this room, and you say, how long did it take all of these people to make a, their first article edit? 70% of them made their first article edit within 24 hours, and of that 70%, 90% of them did it within the first hour. So this isn't the end goal. The end goal is a better encyclopedia through very, very active editors, but this is a really good um, 
metric of are we sort of like testing the waters, are we doing an okay job of what we're doing in terms of bringing in new people. Um, and the result so far is actually that we get lots more first-time contributors, which makes a whole lot of sense. Um, we're sort of taking everybody who otherwise would have gotten nothing and we're showing them how to make that first edit. Um, this screenshot is actually of uh, recent changes on English Wikipedia, um, which you can filter by getting started, one word, um, edit, another word. I um, mean, you can actually look at all of the new editor uh, contributions here. If the person coming in and making this getting started that has less than 10 edits, um, then we tag their edit with this new editor getting started tag so that other people know who they are and why they're editing this random stuff that was tagged for copy editing, like how did this new person find this page. Um, and it's also kind of a nice thing in case, like, when we first launched this feature, like, if we were worried about maybe creating some kind of explosion in vandalism, these kind of recent changes tags are really useful for, like, providing a cue for people who are interested in that to work through. Um, thankfully, it hasn't been a huge problem. Um, but this is pretty much what it looks like, too. It's usually people without a top page, without a user page, who are editing our article for the first time. Um, in terms of the actual data from A-B test results, we generally run an A-B test for a week with 100% of the users and split it 50-50. We give the test version to people with like odd user IDs and we give the control version to people with even user IDs. Um, so we end up with a test and a control group of about roughly equal proportions, 12 to 14,000 editors in each group. And then we look at, for whatever given metric, in terms of one plus or five plus, which group had more edits. And in generally this case, the best results we've had so far is a 2% gain in first time article edits among the test group. Um, now, 2% doesn't sound like a whole lot, but over time, we run this over a whole month out of all the thousands of people who are joining Wikipedia, and we end up with a pretty significant change in the project. Like, Ori suggested I put in a picture of the Grand Canyon goat. We didn't build, God didn't make the Grand Canyon by like blowing things up like all at once, like a gigantic explosion. Oh, it, the Grand Canyon was built like long periods over time by the Colorado River, just like increasingly chunking away little pieces of rock until you built the like the world's largest hole in the ground. Um, Citation needed. <laughs> hey, no reenacting XC as a case of deep cartoons. You need the sign. In, in terms of the quality of these editors, um, the, met, the, the we could we look at it. Um, with the uh, A-B test results too, but I kind of like looking at, so the last two months in June and July, uh, right before Wikimania, we ran this getting started experience for all the new people who came in. Um, so we can look at a month long cohort of people and actually see how many people came in and made their first edit or their first five edits through, get, through this getting started thing. They made their first edit, they clicked next article, they went on and on and on and on until they reached five to 10 or whatever. Um, in terms of the revert rate, they're basically the same. Um, it's about 1,000 people out of each 12,000 person cohort get reverted um, for any reason whatsoever. It's 8.1% in control and 8.4% in test, which at that, at, at that size is a statistically insignificant difference. And then the block rate overall is low. Um, I don't have a comparable number um, on this slide, but um, the block rate for all the active editors, so five plus who came in for getting started in June, was 7.6%. Um, I think just looking at the active editors is actually a little bit fairer because people, if you include everybody who made one edit and then went away, the block rate goes way, way down to like 1% always in most cases because people who just make one edit and go away, even if they get yelled at, they almost never get blocked except for username violations. Um, so in other words, the quality is pretty good at these editors. We're not having to revert like massive amounts of them and they're not creating some kind of huge workload problem for the existing totally screwing up articles when they edit. Um, in terms of the general site-wide impact so far, in June there were 26, more than 2,600 uh, people who came in and getting started made their first edit to articles. Um, and in July it was 3, 000, a little over 3,000. In both of those groups, if you wait the whole month long and then see how many of them reach five edits, it's about 20 to 30 percent of them reach five edits. So we're bringing in between 800, 1,000 tops editors depending on the, the given month and what the seasonal trends are. Um, in June, uh, two, two additional statistics that I thought were interesting. Um, the June people, by July, um, so by the next month I had looked, they had contributed 16,000 edits as a cohort to articles alone in English Wikipedia. So these newbies that we bring in 
are making a pretty significant impact on the encyclopedia's content. Um, in terms of the getting started editors in July, Visual Editor was launched as the one of the two default editors um, on English Wikipedia starting July 1st and was enabled pretty much the same way except for bug fixes and other deployments throughout the whole month. And in that month, 67% of the edits by these kids, the new getting started contributors were with Visual Editor. I think it's a really interesting statistic because if you look at Visual Editor adoption as a proportion of the population as a whole, it's pretty low. I forget the exact numbers recently and it's probably changed since they switched um, the names of the buttons and which order they're in. Um, but as far as these new people are concerned who are making really simplistic edits, most of them are using Visual Editor, which I think is interesting in the sense that the theory behind Visual Editor is that even right now, when it's slow and buggy and has all kinds of problems, it's still better for brand new people to make very simple edits. And I think this lends weight to that claim. Um, and so, to give a bit of context is about whether we think this project is done and successful or not, even though we're bringing in 3,000 people making their first edit for the first time, it's close, but it's not enough. If we need to bring English Wikipedia growing again, just that project, we need to bring in between 1,000 and 2,000 additional active editors, so five plus edits a month, um, every month, in order to make English Wikipedia grow again. So we're making somewhat of a dent, but it's not 100% done yet, and we've got more work to do. Um, in terms of what's next to do that, we're doing additional A-B testing of workflows of how to deliver tasks to people and show them how to do it, and also who we deliver tasks to contextually. So for instance, the next A-B test we want to run, if you came in and you were actually editing an article, we want to skip all the getting started stuff and send you straight back to editing that article so that you can continue with the task that you were doing and we're not interrupting you. Um, we also want to launch outside English Wikipedia. The actual content of the landing page and the toolbar and all the software is actually already localized in a bunch of languages, but most Wikipedias don't have these like gigantic comprehensive task categories that um, English Wikipedia does, so we need to work with Wikipedians from French, Spanish, German, Russian, all these other projects to figure out the right way and the right kind of task to deliver to these people. Um, and then the other thing is we're going to be collaborating with the mobile team, the mobile web team, in order to build a mobile version of this getting started experience. Um, in the last couple weeks, of, I think maybe almost a month ago, the mobile web team launched editing and login and account creations on the all language versions of the mobile website. So we've got all of the mixins ready, like there and waiting to show people how to edit on mobile. Um, and so far they do, even without getting started, like more than 500 editors, and I think about one week that they looked at it, um, had edited by mobile. And that's all, that's not just new registry people, that's all. Um, and then in the long run, uh, if we want to sort of comprehensively look at how do we help all new people learn how to do a task that they're interested in that helps Wikipedia. There are obviously like alternative forms of first tasks that we need to support. So people who sign up and they signed up because, so for instance, they wanted to contribute to a semi-protected or fully protected page. Make some kind of suggestion about it, edit it, whatever. We need to teach them the right way to do that. Um, there's also article creators. When we run surveys of people who've just registered and ask them, what did you want to do on Wikipedia? A, a solid like 20, 25% of them are signing up in order to create new articles, and the experience of doing that is really still like completely fucked up and horrible. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so th those are the four things that we're really interested in doing over the next uh, year with this onboarding process, in addition to other experiments on the team. So if you want to learn more, a good starting page is the Wikipedia Getting Started page on English Wikipedia. That includes links to view the recent changes stream of all the edits. It includes links to our meta page, which includes all of our research documentation, uh, links to the like numbers of cohorts and every single of the five A-B tests we run, what those versions look like, everything. Um, and then I also would really encourage anybody interested in editor engagement and new editor engagement in particular as an issue to join the editor engagement mailing list, which is a public mailing list that WMF staff and designers are really active on, and it's absolutely the best place to get in touch with us uh, in a really quick way about editor engagement issues. And we also publish our weekly deployment notes there for Brisa and I, so that everything to editor engagement software teams do gets noted on that in that list. Um, I don't know how fast I talk or if I have time for questions, but does anybody have any? Orin?
which actually filter out attached accounts. Um, so we don't filter out sock puppets. We don't have an algorithm for detecting that yet. Um, <laughs> when I, we just throw a lot yeah, of music. I mean, seriously, I, I did include that in the block rate, so anybody who is blocked with a sock puppet, out of those 25 people, 326, one of them was blocked. I hand-coded them, so I, I know all of the blocks. Um, one of them was blocked with a sock puppet. Uh, other handful of them were blocked for username violations, and most of them were blocked for spam and vandalism. Another question here, I think. Uh, yeah, James. Uh, yes. Um, is this data on um, editor terms in public, and if so, can you isolate it by geographic region? Um, can you repeat the question? Uh, yeah. Uh, is the data about editor retention public, and can you isolate it by geographic region? The answer to the first one is yes. All of the data that I included in this talk can, which we use in the foundation to look at total active editors, by project, by year, monthly, whatever. That's all public. It's included in the monthly report cards and on stats.wikimedia.org. Um, and it's also it's also data you can generate from any of the publicly accessible like APIs and dumps and everything else. Um, so we're not really using that. Um, geographic. The geographic is slightly more nuanced. Um, I don't know if I should give a comprehensive answer about it. I think the general answer is there's stuff, there is some stuff on stats.wikimedia.org that tells um, by project where people are, like the regions people are editing from in an aggregate basis, but we don't look at um, the IP addresses of registered editors who come in through getting started. Um, that's private data. We could get access to it if we really wanted to, like, um, but we don't, and it's not important. Generally, when we publish things, um, whether it's private or public data, we publish, we publish aggregate statistics that are inherently anonymized. Um, if you wanted to actually like run your own experiment, say, to target people in a certain geographic region, there are ways you could do that without actually exposing their private ID information. So for instance, the grants and program team ran their own experiment to run banners to uh, English Wikipedia visitors in the Philippines suggesting that they sign up for Wiki Project Philippines and edit articles there. Um, so they did that. So there's ways you can target people in certain, certain geographic regions without actually knowing who, which individuals are based where and what IP addresses. We should talk about it more afterwards. Any other questions? <laughs> 